Howdy Airstream designers. I have on the screen a an example of what I call the bulge design trailers because they're wider right through this center section than the original earlier trailers. Uh, this is the end cap model that I was talking about that I was working with one of our Ember other members. Uh, really not sure how to pronounce his uh, <coughs> tag here, but I'll try Chikusho. Chikusho maybe is how it's pronounced. But as I had mentioned before, I've been working for, with him for quite a while before I actually started these uh, designs. And so in working with him, I decided, hey, let's make this our first end cap we're working on. Now, before we get started, this is going to be the most challenging part of our adventure not necessarily because it is more difficult uh, more so because there are many steps and stages in getting to this end product. I'm going to rotate this around so you can see this from a little different view. Okay, And this is the inner end cap that was created for his trailer. And unfortunately at this point I'm not sure of the year of his trailer, but you can see that um, it's one of the larger trailers uh, and of the newer model. And this was the point that he was at and having some difficulty and asked if I would assist him. And so um, I have, which led to this end cap. And I think it's a really good one to work on and explain some of the challenges we're going to have in this phase of our work. All the lessons in this area are going to be uh, led by the number 3. So it'll be like 3A, 3B, 3C, and so on. What I want to do first of all is come up and turn off the shadow. And part of the reason for that is uh, the shadow uses memory and slows down the process of working. So you only want to click it on and off. Uh, when you want to view and see what the shape is. The shadow ha helps you see the shape uh, in a clearer way. Alright, also what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in on this front part now and uh, I have no black lines which are very helpful in the designing process so I'm going to go up to styles I'm going to turn the display and the profile on and I have it set as one. That's what I like. You may choose something else, but I find that the best to work with for what I like to do. All right, so this is what um, he originally has sent to me. He had worked out the curves and um, I think did a very nice job. That really looks like the shape of the trailer. The one thing that um, I've asked him to maybe look at again is in his curves when he made these segments. These are all 12, say 12 segment arcs, which makes for a very pleasant and attractive curve. Uh, part of the problem is this becomes very memory intensive. And so, <coughs> uh, depending on your computer, this could slow the progress of your computer down considerably. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention at this point, if you do have something that has uh, high requirements for your computer, sometimes you might think that you ask it to perform a function and nothing happens. You're going to think, my computer has crashed. It may just be that it's going to take it a long time to process it. So before you keep going over and over again trying to figure out what you've gone wrong, what I often do is uh, I'll look for two things. Uh, one is uh, if my pointer is still available. The other thing is a little hourglass that pops up. And when the little hourglass pops up it means your computer is working. And generally what that indicates is it's used up all the capacity of the RAM in your computer and is now asking the processor in your computer to function as RAM to help get the work done. Uh, it will eventually do it. It's just much slower than RAM. So oftentimes what I'll do when I'll see that happens, 
uh, I'll go fix a cup of coffee or something else, maybe walk outside, take a little break, because uh, I'm sure you have noticed when you're working on these things, you can get so involved in it, the time can slip by and the hours can go by, and uh, you haven't taken a break or done anything else. So I use it as an excuse to take a break and maybe 20, 30 minutes sometimes uh, to see if the problem is the computer is just needing the time to render. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and continue even though his model is fairly complex. I've already gone to the second stage and I'm going to take hidden off here for a minute. I'm going to deselect both of these. Uh, if you remember there was the one stage where you create your arcs for your shell and then you fill in the end panel. Once the end panel is filled in you need to pull these panels out uh, using the pull tool so that they're the same thickness as your shell is. If you have forgotten how thick your shell is and if you have given yourself the measuring tool and remember I said that if you don't have these tools, you should be able to go to View, Toolbar, and whoops, excuse me, View Toolbar, and come down to Measurements and make sure that's checked. And if it is checked, you should have this tool. All right. So if I click on this tool, I can come down and put a mark on this side, move up to the other side, put put a click. So each one requires a click, and then pull out, and I get a measuring symbol that tells me what the measuring is. And this is kind of hard to read because this is so small, but you can see it's two inches. I'm going to do Control Z for now to get rid of that. So when I pulled these out, I made sure these were also pulled out to uh, two inches uh, when we're going to work. All right, what I want to do next, because we want to make the shape that's going to follow this line, this contour to give us our complex design. And what we need to do is work with something that gives us a floor plan. Now there are many places on SketchUp where you can go in and find a floor plan for your year and size of trailer. Uh, the Vintage Airstream archives, which I listed in an earlier lesson, uh, you can go to and just about find anything you want in that section. What I'm going to do is click on the model and hide it. So I'm going to right click and go to hide and it gets it out of the way. If I want to bring it back I go up to edit, come down to unhide and click untied la last and it reappears. We'll m work more with the hide, hide, excuse me, the hide function as we go through this process, and that also can get a little complicated uh, as we work along. So let's try to take that just at a step at a time. So again, I'm going to click on it so that I see the component. Right click, hide. All right, then I'm going to move this floor plan around and move in so that it's very large filling the screen and begin to work on making my arc. Now the other thing you want to make sure that you move this around so that you've got it flat and you're looking right straight at it. Okay, because it's very easy to get it at an angle and if you do it'll be difficult to get your curves correct. Now with all the trailers if you look at them carefully, this is not one continuous curve. It, it starts out at a very shallow curve, increases sharply, and then decreases again. And we can see that if we take the arc tool. And I'm just going to click on a spot. Well, maybe what I'll do here first is I'll click on the black here, and I'll click on the black here. And you can see there's no way that shape is going to match. 